awesome. Okay, so Tiski, what do you think about Els Club so far? This is beautiful, and I also think that um, it's tough, but but fun. Like I'm having a lot of fun, and I'm having fun playing with my buds. With your boys. My boys. <laughs> okay, what do you think about the Els Club, big dog? Fantastic. Easily the best staff at any golf course I've been to so far. I think that's a difference so far. It's that yeah. the it's the service. The, the service. The course yeah. is great. The course is, the course is good. Is fantastic, but that's as good and just, better than any other in the yeah. area. But like, bro. Even you in Thailand, you don't get service. You can't like this. be that service. I mean, bringing water for you on the on the course, food if you wanted, just order it from the golf cart. And the guy with the cold towels, it. man. Those cold towels when you've been playing <laughs> in thirty six <laughs> degrees, and you just put that cold towel against your face, you're like, Shoo. oh yeah. Got okay, Brian Ski. I'm going to be hitting some tee shots for you, boy. Yeah. And then we're going to compare the difference between because you're having issues with the tee. Yeah, man. What's your issue? Uh, brainworms. Gotta love them brainworms. The headworms. Day yeah. two at Els Club de Saru Valley Course and it was experiment day. Brian makes a long-awaited return to the channel. He hasn't been on here since he broke 100 way back in the day. Unfortunately, his game fell to pieces since then. He's been shooting 115 plus and hasn't been having much of fun -o. But this gives us, the observers, the opportunity to witness what happens when you dangerously combine generic YouTube swing mechanic advice with the self-diagnosis skills of a high handicapper. It also gives us a chance to see what happens if a 115 scorer gets help with the tee shots. In this experiment, he'll hit his tee shot to show you what's been happening. But then I'll also hit a tee shot and he'll continue to hole out from where my tee shot finishes. We'll just pick up his tee shot and move on. I won't be smashing drivers either. It's a realistic experiment to show what would happen if he just had 200 to 220 yards off the tee instead of pop gun 90 yard shuries. He used to hit that distance off the tee with his hybrid a year ago. He has the power to hit it 250 yards with the driver for sure, if he swung it like he is capable. So 200 to 220 yards is realistic for him. Why am I hitting the tee shot specifically? Brian has developed Headworms Deluxe on the tee shots. It's killing his enjoyment of the game. He says other than the tee shots, he's been okay. Just for reference, here's a reminder of the real B-Ski's former swing. This experiment may not be as much an experiment as an illustration of how much a man suffers by self-diagnosing issues in his golf swing and finding cures on his own. But when you watch my tee shots, always remember, Brian was able to hit these shots just like I'm hitting them. That's the saddest part, that we get made to feel like we can't get better if we can't do a certain thing and so we need a product to fill the void. Perfectly fine. Great one, great one. Get up there. Yeah, that's fine. On in three. Slow down. That's what I want. After hole one, Brian probably picked up one stroke on the hole with a six. A 7 is most likely after the drive that went way right. Okay, bro, thank you. Yeah, man. Now tell me, it's 111 to the pin. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? I'm going to the right of the pin. Okay, what are you hitting? Right. 8. 8 or 111, so, what did you hit there? On that one? Yeah, 105 there. 105, I hit a 9. How was it? Well, I get in the teeth or whatever it okay. was that I did. Okay, let's see. Eight time. Perfect. It's fine. As long as you got over that water. Perfect. Okay, let me go with one. Yes, player. Whoa, stop! Okay. 
Great shot. Brian was having the camera nerves. His short game is actually that of a 12 handicapper, to be honest. It's never easy playing in front of a camera, knowing that there are thousands of maniacs just like me out there who will watch it. That'll work. Okay, just on the fairway. Yeah. Okay, so, so Brian's down here on the front of the fairway. Mine's down there at that bunker over there. Players, I can't let the video go on without at least talking about what I thought Brian's issues were. The first step down the slippery slope of golfing destruction is a thought. The thought that starts the death spiral of the self-diagnosing golfer. That thought was that Matt is full of shizer, and that high handicappers can fix their own swing. In the original video, you'll see I moved Brian further from the ball. He was just too cramped. That thought leads to an action. He then stands much closer to the ball again, like he's going to hit a chip shot. That self-diagnosis leads to compensations. Compensation number one. Gripping down on the club because there is not enough space for the whole club because he is too close to it. Compensation number two. Slashing across the ball because there is nowhere for the hands to go at impact without smashing himself in the cock. These compensations then lead to Keep adjustments. Cutting. Keep cutting. Adjustment number one weakening the grip. He rotated his hands to the left on the grip, which promotes a slice. I tried to tell him that the weaker the grip, the more the slice. But he told me it's the only thing that helped. We cannot argue against a person's worldview. We are sliding very quickly down the deep, dark rabbit hole. But there are no rabbits, just pain and suffering. Adjustment number two, taking quarter swings to minimize the movement to prevent big mistakes. Oh boy. Well, Brian's ski is back there, and my shot is probably about, about 60 yards up. It's not the longest shot I've ever hit. It didn't hit it very well, but this is the kind of thing that you may be looking to do. I mean, get yourself a lesson so you can get a, a fairway wood or something up into the fairway 200 yards or so. You don't need more than that to really see a difference. That's fine. Okay, see now, nice that's a little up. Shuri McDuri up the fairway. Oh, it's getting closer to the green. Look now we just close it is. Look, that's almost the intended place he wanted to be. Exactly. So exactly if we can get I, there... That's all part of the plan. See? There's a wind at the moment. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> yeah Tiger Woods. <laughs> Tiger Woods has the stinger. Brian has the stinker. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Liam. <laughs> oh, beauty, man. Great oh. shot. Great shot, that's the short game specialist. Now on this hole, Brian may have made a five or a six with his original ball. From my tee shot, which is in his realm of ability, he scored a lovely five. Wait, wait. Players, I know this hurts to watch, but there is hope. At the end of this video, I show you how we cured Brian and how he started loving golf again and cannot wait to get out onto the course. I'm not going to hit any drivers today. It doesn't uh, give a fair reflection of the test. So maximum two iron and four iron. It looks unrealistic that he could hit the ball like me at this stage. I believe in this player as much as I believe in J-Mac, but there is a key difference. Brian's ego was too built up. There are two egos we need to smash. One is the all-knowing ego, where we think we know stuff, 
when we don't. The second is the scaredy cat ego. We need to get over the fear of the unknown, the fear of failure, the fear of judgment, the fear of success. Once we break those two egos, we can open our mind to learning. We can see clearly how 100 bucks on a golf lesson changes our life is worth more than the 100 bucks on a bottle of whiskey. The hardest part for me was to watch Bisky hit shots that went nowhere. This is a strong guy. I've seen him smash four hybrids 210 no, it just came plus. Out right there, green. But everything seemed to go about 70 to 120 yards. This is yeah. demoralizing yeah. for anyone. It's clear the tee shot is a big part of the game, boyfriends. I mean, just getting off the tee with something that doesn't loop left to right like a pop gun will change anyone's whole outlook on the game. But it's not always easy to isolate only one thing like the tee shots as an issue. It's the thought and the perception that manifests into a swing or a set of actions. If we can sort out that thought and misunderstanding, we can sort out everything, players. That may be caught past. Okay, a little banana over the bunker, absolutely perfect. Yeah. That's exactly where I want it. Both of our tee shots ended up in the same place, so we just used one ball from there. Better result. So you need to get in the shit to play better. It's what I'm used to. For the next two holes, I made Brian hit all the shots from the tee to greens as well as from my tee shots. Let's see what the difference would be because it was becoming clear to me this type of experiment would not help him to learn anything and maybe not you either, player. Your job is not self-diagnosis. Your job is to have fun. Your job is to avoid stupid generic swing mechanic advice online. Your job is to get addicted to golf. Your job is to play until you're 80 years old and to play through all three divorces. Yeah, nice shot. Tasty, tasty little treat that. Yeah. There are people out there who have knowledge you can pay for. The pro's knowledge can stop you from quitting the game or struggling with pain. And no, I'm not talking about everyone going to go see a pro if nothing is wrong. Okay, but this video is go? about oh. someone struggling hard. So, when people say, be careful of pros, Yes, there are bad ones, but there are tons of good ones. And what alternative does a guy like Brian have in this situation? These exact opinions people have of pros being bad or shysters are the very reason people like Brian may give up on golf or get so frustrated that he hates golf. He thinks the pro will f*** him up, so he finds advice from online pros who are trying to sell you some nonsense course. What was clear to me was that I would be forcing Brian to go for a lesson after the round. I would add the condition that he is not allowed to play with me again unless he goes to see the pro. I also told him I bet the pro will focus on three things. Distance from the ball, grip and ball position.
mediums to. Should I do a driver as well? No, no, hit that. No, we can, yeah, you'd hit that and then hit a driver. See how it goes. See how it goes. Yeah, good shot. Where is it? And he pumps one. That, dude, that is the best shot you've hit in two days. Oh, that would be quite sensual. Desire. That's a great strike, player. Awesome. That's a player strike right there. Yes. Okay, great. Now we're going to see where we end up compared. Thank you. Okay, so, but as you play, you learn the lesson. Okay. It's tough out of the fluffy stuff. It's going to grab the club. It's, so just go up one more. Should I take another club? No, no. Just for the next round. Okay, next one. Boys, remember when daddy chased the monsters away from your bedroom? Remember how safe you felt when you knew the monster wouldn't come back to haunt you in your dreams? Well, we all have a daddy to chase our nightmares away. Brian found his golfing daddy in David at the Els Club de Saru. He's a fellow South African and an absolute boss. He told Brian all he needed was an hour and he could fix him. And that's just what he did. This changed Brian's life. He can now enjoy golfing holidays. He can wake up after a day of golf and feel zero pain. He can look forward to golf for the first time and in fact shot his personal best of 92 no more than two weeks after this lesson. There is hope players, but it doesn't come from the shysters on the internet talking about swing mechanics. You, you cannot and will not implement it correctly if it's even applicable to you. Your buddies also don't know anything about the swing. They just don't. They also don't know how to teach you to do something new to fix your problem. They can point it out with some lingo they picked up on YouTube or in a Golf Digest magazine. If your friends talk to you about early extension, early release, hips then hands, early rotation, spinning out, coming out of it, over the top, in to out, out to in, tell them to shut up. This type of talk is just mumbo jumbo and will not help anyone. Let's rather keep quiet about fixing people's swings if they do not solicit advice. And if you do ask for advice, make sure they know what the f they're talking about.